It's time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun Suk, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Dr. Yang, thank you for coming on today. Happy to be here. So the Bank of Korea cutting its policy rate by a quarter percentage point today to try and give the economy a boost. Uh, what was their thinking and what does this mean? Okay, well, I think they are very concerned that the uh, growth rate for Korea is declining. Uh, the uh, uh, Korea's government had, uh, in their outlook, uh, estimated that Korea would grow, grow by 2.4 to 2.5 percent this year. The uh, Bank of Korea had estimated the, uh, this year's growth rate to be 2.2 percent, but now those type of growth rates uh, seem to be impossible. The uh, latest estimate of Korea's growth rate came in by IMF uh, just uh, this week, and that only uh, estimated 2.0 percent. And personally, I think two, even 2.0 uh, percent may be difficult, uh, given the growth that we already had at the early half of the year, uh, the first half of the year, we would have to do as good as we did last year to reach 2.0 percent, but right now it looks like things are going to be worse than last year. Uh, so even the IMF's pessimistic estimate is uh, probably uh, not going to be met. And then uh, there's also a lot of concern about deflation, as mentioned in the previous story. I personally don't think uh, deflation is that big a problem. I agree with the government interpretation that this is a uh, technical uh, uh, fault because we had a very high food prices last year, but there's no uh, getting around the fact that the inflation, core inflation, if you take out the uh, fresh food and energy, is still very low. It's only about 0.5 percent, whereas the Bank of Korea's target is 2 percent, and that signals that there's very weak demand currently, uh, whether it be domestic consumption demand, investment demand, or export demand. Uh, so uh, given the such low levels of demand, uh, economic recovery is not likely to come out soon. So Bank of Korea has decided that, well, uh, they should better uh, lower the rates to try to raise demand. I'm not quite sure how successful it will be, but I feel that Bank of Korea had to uh, try to do something. Well, uh, the rate cut would seem to have had some effect on the markets. Uh, the cost be up today. What's happening in global stocks and what's your outlook? Okay, well, the uh, Korea was obviously affected by the uh, rate cut, but not as much as probably some people had hoped, uh, largely because everybody expected this interest rate cut. Uh, uh, now, as for the global markets, uh, things had gone fairly well at the end of last week because, well, President Trump announced that uh, U.S. and China uh, had a, a deal worked out. But over the weekend, uh, that came into some bit of a question. Uh, the deal does not seem to be as large as President Trump advertised. And China is uh, saying that unless uh, U.S. gives up uh, more tariffs, uh, it's not going to sign the deal, even the small deal that they had agreed to make. So the uh, international market, I think, has become a lot more uh, shaky in the last couple of days. Uh, so the international environment, international stock market is really a bit shaky at this point. Well, now, as we just heard, uh, we've got employment numbers out today in Korea. The newly employed up more than 300,000. The employment rate uh, fell to a six-year low of 3.1 percent. On the surface, it would seem things are getting better. But what do you think? Okay, well, uh, it's, a, it's good news. I wouldn't say it's great news if you look uh, behind the scenes, but still, it's a lot better than what we were doing at the first half of the year uh, when we were not only losing jobs, but whatever jobs that were being created were only part-time jobs. Uh, now, uh, this month and last month, we've seen a lot of growth in full-time jobs rather than part-time jobs. Uh, so that's good news. And we've seen a substantial job growth in the uh, 20-year-olds and and over 60-year-olds. Uh, however, uh, the, we have uh, seen some uh, job losses in 30s and 40s. And if you look at a uh, longer period of time, the uh, job creation for people in their 50s are not doing very well either. So that's uh, worrying since if you don't have a steady job, 
uh, your cons- uh, they will uh, it'll take longer for consumption demand to pick up, and these uh, 30, 40, 50 year olds are basically heads of households. So uh, any problems that they have with their jobs and their earning power, it's going to show up a lot, not only in the consumption figures, but also in the welfare figures, because, well, uh, being head of households, it's not only going to be themselves who are being affected, but also their families. Now, uh, also, the type of jobs that are being created, uh, it seems that we are getting uh, growth in jobs in uh, lodging and restaurants. That's probably because of the uh, Chusok holidays and people uh, who decided to uh, spend their uh, Chusok vacation in Korea rather than going to Japan. So that's good news. Uh, We'll have to see whether it lasts uh, because uh, lodging and restaurants, uh, the jobs there took a lot of negative hit uh, over the year and last year because of the higher minimum wage and 52-hour workweek laws. Now, the the job gains took place also in uh, social work and health. That's mostly government-funded jobs. So uh, that's uh, where the government fiscal policy comes in, uh, which is okay. But still, we had lo- uh, job loss in uh, the manufacturing sector. Uh, we had jobs losses in retail sector. And uh, those uh, can be bad news unless they pick up in the next uh, month or two. Yeah, it sounds like the big question is whether it lasts. All right, Dr. Young, that's where we'll leave it today. Thank you for coming on and sharing your insights. Thank you.